Buckle up, cause things are about to get steamy. Before we get started, we'd like to thank Benki Brewing Tools for sending us the Bellman to play with and review. No money exchanged hands and they don't get to watch this before any of you do. A huge thanks to our Patreon supporters and lastly, a sub to the channel would be brilliant. Anyway, let's get right to it. Good manual espresso machines are becoming more and more affordable, but the one thing they lack is the ability to steam milk and that's where products like the Bellman and Nanoforma step in. The Bellman CX25S, which we'll be looking at today, is a stovetop steamer that claims to create dry steam for milk texturing, much like the ones you find on most espresso machines. We've had the Bellman for a few weeks now, and here's our honest opinion on it. It's a simple device that has the following parts. The main chamber that holds the water, a two-hole steam wand and control knob that's attached to this chamber, an insert basket, a lid, a chunky knob to seal the lid shut, gaskets all around for airtight seals, and lastly, a handle that's detachable for better portability. Okay, we can probably just skip this section entirely, right? Because I can't really think of anything other than maybe acknowledging the complete lack of aesthetics. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just ugly. And let's be honest, you wouldn't want this hanging out on your carefully crafted Instagrammable coffee station. It's more of a quickly use and hide away kind of product, so let's move on. Coming to functionality, we're happy to report there's a little more to talk about here. Let's start with how this thing works. Basically, it's like a mini pressure cooker. Unfortunately, it looks like one too. With a little knob that controls the outlet of steam, you fill it halfway with water, shut it tight, heat it up, and voila, you have steam. It is quite slow on a regular gas stove, but super quick on a powerful induction hob like the one we have here. Just make sure yours is stainless steel 304 compatible. Lastly, the fact that all you need is water and some heat makes it easy to use on the go and when you're out camping, although the Nanoforma is still a lot smaller and easier to pack away. Overall, it feels quite solidly built and does what it's supposed to. But if you're someone who's used to steaming on a commercial machine, then this is obviously not quite at the same level and you can't really expect it to be. It has a few quirks and takes some getting used to, but with a little bit of practice and patience, we've been able to get very well textured milk with light fluffy microfoam that pours beautifully. In the right hands, you can get some really intricate latte art. Well, it's clearly not in the right hands, but I can promise you I'm not this bad. Just knowing that the camera is rolling somehow makes my pose super wobbly. Anyway, you can see that it's got a really nice moussey texture though. At around 110 US dollars and over 9,000 Indian rupees, the Bellman isn't exactly cheap. It's a lot more expensive than a French press, which is great for texturing milk on a budget. We have a detailed blog post on our technique, which we've linked in the description below. It's nearly three times the price of the Nanoforma, which also does a fantastic job. You can check out our review linked up here. So what would justify spending the extra money on a Bellman? Well, one of the things would be workflow. Steaming allows you to texture and heat simultaneously, so it's just quicker and more streamlined. The other reason would be the texture itself. Steaming creates an airiness that you just don't get otherwise. It's hard to describe, but it just feels more delicate and lighter. Okay, what do you say we steam some milk? Start by filling up the chamber a little less than halfway. Don't go any higher. You can go as low as quarter full if you're in a hurry. Leave the steam control knob open and place on high heat. Once you hear hissing from the wand, shut it and lower the heat to medium. Fill your pitcher with milk no higher than the base of the spout. You want the milk to be cold as you'll have more time to create proper microfoam. Room temperature or warm milk will just get hot too quickly. You also want to avoid overfilling the pitcher as steaming adds volume and you want enough headroom for the milk to swirl around. Then wait 30 seconds or so and keep venting the wand to see if you're at the pressure you want. We wish there was a gauge, but with some trial and error, you'll get a feel for when it's ready to go. Do not let the pressure build up too high. You'll know if you've waited too long if the safety valve kicks in and releases pressure. This is a fail-safe and shouldn't be used as an indicator. Imagine for some reason that the safety valve fails, then you're essentially dealing with a little bomb. This is precisely why we're wary of pressurized appliances, so please be careful. Okay, once you're satisfied with the steam output, give it one good purge to get rid of any condensation and start a clean flow of dry steam. Then get your pitcher in position. 
Place the wand inside the spout for support and position the tip so that it's at the midpoint between the handle and the spout and tilt it off to one side to create the whirlpool or vortex. Submerge the tip just below the surface of the milk and you're ready to go. Open up the control knob fully and slowly lower the pitcher until you hear the chirping of milk being aerated. Remember that small movements have a big impact on how much air is added to the milk so think micro adjustments. You want to avoid loud spluttering sounds as they create large bubbles that are hard to incorporate fully before your milk reaches the right temperature. This aeration or stretching phase should end roughly when your cold pitcher starts to feel more room temperature. This can vary a bit depending on the kind of milk or alt milk you're using, so use this as a starting point and find what works for you. To stop the stretch, just push the pitcher up a little so the tip is once again submerged. Then we keep the vortex going until the pitcher just starts to feel uncomfortably hot to touch. At this point, cut the steam and set the pitcher down. Quickly wipe the wand clean with a damp cloth and purge to prevent any clogging. Don't forget this step. Then set it aside to cool down. Tap the pitcher a few times to get rid of any stray bubbles, give it a few swirls and you have velvety milk that's ready to be transformed into your latte art masterpiece. And last, we'll be enjoying this delicious flat white. So who is the Bellman for? Well, that's pretty clear just based on the niche that it fills. You're someone who has a manual lever machine like the Flare or Rock and want to be able to steam milk. You don't care about how this thing looks and you're willing to spend almost three times more than you would on a Nanoformer for a slightly better and quicker workflow and that light airy texture that only steaming can give you. Well, now that we're done steaming, it's time to wrap this one up. We hope you found this review useful, but now we'd love to hear from you. Do you own the Bellman? What has your experience been and is there anything that we missed? Let us know in the comments below and as always, thank you so much for watching and Steam Aramsey.